Hey everyone, Reed here from the Havens Consulting YouTube channel. For those not familiar with me, I'm a Microsoft MVP with Power BI and I'm collaborating with Parker to do some guest posts between our channels. Today I'd like to walk you through some really useful features that have come out in preview as part of the new relationship view that allows you to have a really great and effective way to organize your DAX measures and also do some bulk editing as well. Now, as I mentioned, that is in preview at the moment, so to turn these on, you do need to turn that on in the preview options. You come up here to the file menu, go to options and settings here, options settings, there we are. Let's come down and let's come down to preview features and just make sure that you have the new modeling view right here turned on. Now, if you're watching this a few months down the road, this should already have been turned on by now, but if you are just watching this as it was released, this is what you need to turn on. Go ahead and close out this window. Now, once you have this turned on, you'll notice that there's a new modeling view over here for relationships. So we go over here and select that. We'll see a bunch of things in here. Now, I'm not going to dig into everything that this view has. One of the cool things down here is it does allow you to create multiple perspectives to have different layouts depending on the flow of your data. But I just want to cover on some really useful DAX features that I've learned recently in terms of organization and editing. So to start with, let's come over here to the list that I have for my DAX calculations. Now you might notice that I do have a folder for DAX measures. I'll link down in the description the actual video that shows you how to create this as I'm not going to cover it in this video. But what about if I wanted to be able to edit more than one of these at once? In this view and environment, you can multi-select and then have the ability to be able to format more than one measure at a time. So this can save a lot of time and effort as you're developing these. Instead of having to go through one of these at a time, go up to the uh, to the format tab up here at the top and then format them individually. So you can do that, which really saves a lot of time. Now, the other thing in here that can be really useful, as I mentioned, is the ability to organize by subfolders. So let's say as an example, like these, the, like the year over year amount here, the sales amount running total and the prior year sales amount. These are all time-based calculations that I've written in here. So I would want to put these into a folder called time intelligence. I'm going to hit enter there. And you'll notice that it has bucketed that. Now, the one thing you do have to do at the moment is there is no drop down list to add them to that. So I can't select this and I cannot drag and drop it. And once I've created that folder, there's no option for me to pick that from a list. So I do need to copy and paste it in every time I add that to a new folder. Hopefully with some updates, they might make that a bit more streamlined, but for now it still works well enough. And then it allows you to add that subfolder in here as many times as you need. If we take a look back at the reporting view, we do see that that DAX measures table that I've created up here is there. And now within it, I have that separate folder for time intelligence. So it's a really nice, easy way to organize all of your calculations in one single table and then as many subfolders as you would want beneath it. And that's the two biggest things that I really wanted to cover today. One, showing you how to do bulk editing of the measures themselves by multi-selecting, and then as well, some folder organization that lets you create nested subfolders within a DAX measures table. And again, as I mentioned, I will link the video that shows you how to create this actual measures table here that I've done on another video as well. But other than that, that about covers it. I want to again thank Parker for letting me host on his channel. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to his channel. And if you are interested as well, the link to my channel is down below with a lot of other really cool Power BI tips and tricks videos, including the one that Parker just posted to my channel as well recently. And with that being said, I will see you next time.